Hey there for Dragonfly and me friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of my YouTube channel, Gardening 101. So today I am going to be talking on day eight topic of uh, gardening tools. And again, I made a really beautiful PowerPoint to share with all of you guys. So let's get right into it this week. And I'm going to share my screen. So let me get into there and then we can get rolling. Here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome for Dragonflies and me, tips and tricks for the home and garden. Thank you for joining me. So welcome to day eight. Uh, what are my top 10 essential tools for the home gardener? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And so let's keep moving. Gardening 101 Day 8. If you missed days one through seven, no worries. Um, all the links to each one of those episodes is going to be in the description below. And you can definitely visit me at my blog for dragonfliesandme.com to see them. Um, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about showing something. So just remember this center picture right here. Uh, these are lemon cucumbers. All right, here we go. Oh, here we're going to talk about it. So as always, um, at each one of my podcasts, at all my blogs, and my YouTube channel now, I always start my uh, episodes out with a quote uh, fitting for either cooking or gardening. So today's is, a garden requires patient labor and attention. Plants do not grow merely to satisfy ambitions or to fulfill good intentions. They thrive because someone expended effort on them. And gardening is definitely effort expended. And that is by Liberty Hyde Bailey. So if you see here, friends, um, there are some basic gardening tools we're going to talk about. So gardening shears, shovels, hand trowels, forks, gloves. Um, over here, this is my son, Ryan, back when he was 10 or 11, 12, maybe uh, back on the farm. And now he's going to be 21 on March 21st. Um, him and Dave have the same birthday and he is my Marine. So proud of him. But um, and below, this is actually a side of a crib that I used as a trellis and those lemon cucumbers. That's exactly what is growing up on this trellis. So let's get into it. What are the big deals about tools, you may be asking? Well, whether or not you're a novice or an experienced gardener, then you know the importance of good gardening tools. They really do play an important role in successful gardening. Good tools also have an impact on how much you may enjoy gardening. The difference between cheap, flimsy tools versus sturdy, well-manufactured tools can mean the difference between a sprained wrist, unnecessary cuts, and pulled muscles. Gardening is an incredibly wonderful hobby filled with so much fulfillment, so having the right tools for the job really is essential. The last thing you want to do is get an injury because the poorly manufactured garden hoe broke or bent while you were working in the garden soil or the hand trowel snaps, cutting your hand because you hit a large rock under the soil where you didn't see it. And this has really happened. Um, <clears throat> when you buy cheap tools, um, you, you know, just like anything else, you get what you pay for. Um, I was actually working in the garden one time and this exactly, this exact thing happened. And I was digging and um, I hit a rock underneath and I was you know, trying to like pry it, you know, because I'm going to try. And uh, the handle snapped. And thankfully, I was wearing gloves. And so it didn't cut me. Uh, but it did bang me and I did end up having a bruise on it. So and when you're doing those things, you're really, ex you know, you're you're using all your, your strength and your muscles trying to get something. And so you don't realize. And then when something snaps, you can even like fall forward. So really think about that, you know, especially if you're a novice gardener, you're just beginning and you're trying to think, you know, what tools do I need uh, to start gardening, whether it's container gardening, raised bed gardening, or in a large plot gardening, a tillable garden. So here is a few things that I just want to show you. Um, so here's a couple of simple tools. This one right here is a knife and the hand trowels and a little garden fork. And there's me planting some potatoes. And then of course, you know, I like to use organic materials in my gardens, but I now want to get into, you know, let's look at the what I believe are the top 10 essential tools for the home gardener for both a flower and a vegetable garden. So gloves. <clears throat> Excuse me, friends. Gardening can be really tough on your hands and having a good pair of gloves is essential. Look for gloves that are durable, breathable, and have a good fit and also waterproof. Um, they should also have a good grip for you to hold on to tools and plants. So I'm going to just show you guys real quick. These are my gardening gloves. And as you can see, they are very dirty and they are used, but these really fit me well. I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen real quick, just so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. So these have a like, um, like 
like a suede, I guess, almost like a leather part right here. And, um, but these are all waterproof. Um, so when I put these on, I have little hands. And so I need something, and these are even still kind of big, but when I put my gloves on, I really need to be able to get a good grip. And I don't want my hands wet. I really don't want my hands. I spent so many years gardening with my bare hands, hurting myself, and I just don't want to do it anymore. And um, so when I'm working, especially in the raised bed and working with, um, you know, a lot of materials like my straw, manure, uh, whatever it may be, I like to be able to use it with this. I still do use my bare hands sometimes just because it's easier, especially if I'm working in like a pot, but whatnot, but garden gloves have a good pair of these I purchased I got everybody in the family a pair everybody has their own color I think these are actually the boys mine are purple <laughs> they didn't have green that's why but um these garden gloves are really essential so let's share my screen again okay there we go but so when you are planting you really do need to have good gloves see the ones that they're wearing here in this picture that I found um they're more fabric and they do get wet I don't like having wet, can, you know, pruny fingers afterwards. So think about the gloves. It, you know, you wouldn't think you have to put so much thought into it, but it really is better if you do. So a garden trowel and fork. These are probably going to be your most used tools. And I'm going to stop sharing um, my screen again because I want to show you what I have. Um, so I brought some of my tools um, here. And so this right here first is a garden trowel. So it's a little shovel, hand shovel. They actually come more narrow. Uh, they come, th this I think is about the widest you would want, but they do come a little more narrow for like digging into like tighter spots. So your hand trowel, um, this one is a Katie Brown, picked it up somewhere. I probably picked it up because of the orange, the bright orange. Um, you want bright colors in your gardens because believe me, the yellow, the purples, the blues, the hot pinks, they do that for a reason. Because when you are in the garden, believe me, you are going to be using your tools and then you're going to put them down and you're like, oh my goodness, where did I put that shovel? Where did I put my glove? Oh my gosh, where did I put my phone? Um, so you want to keep the things bright and you know, kind of keep them where you want them, especially when you're storing them, like in my organization 101 uh, blogs. Everything has its place, everything in its place. This way, when you're looking for something, you can find it. And that goes with your garden tools as well. But a hand trowel is going to be one of the tools you use very often. Uh, when you're digging a hole for planting a seedling, um, you generally want to plant or dig the hole that same size as what the pot is that the plant is in, a little bit bigger, wider and um, uh, deeper. And so you're going to need a good sturdy shovel. This is a really, really good sturdy shovel because believe me, when you are digging, especially into a tillable plot, um, you're going to hit things, you're going to hit rocks, you're going to hit roots, and you need something sturdy because you don't want it to snap and break. I have had it happen, friends. This is your garden fork. Um, this is what I call, all my kids and my family know as a scratcher. Um, this is very this is I use this every day literally every day I go in the garden because I'm always scratching the soil and so when you are preparing especially a raised bed um, or you're planting or weeding around if you have a tillable bed uh, garden um, you're going to use this to scratch around the base of the plant to dig around uh, and get any small baby weeds out but when I'm in my raised beds this thing is just scratches any surface weeds that grow, especially in the spring after the winter and things grow before you want them to grow. And um, so this is a really handy tool. This tool is also really handy. And this is one that is very ergonomical. This is a rubber uh, handle and it's good for gripping. This one is also a rubber handle. So that one is also good for gripping, but this tool is really good for weeding. So you want to see this, uh, uh, for this is basically designed for a tap root, uh, which is a long root. Think about a carrot. Um, that's a tap root. So for weeds like dandelions, they have tap roots. So when you're digging those out, this kind of digs out. And then this curve right here is where it's ergonomical. It helps you slide it up and out. And so this is also, I sometimes use this for an onions or garlic bulbs that have really deeply because I don't want them to rip or break. Uh, so if you kind of dig, oh, here's the, your onion. And if you dig through like that and then scoop it up like that, um, it really does work nicely. So I want to show those tools to you uh, in a bigger screen. So now let me share my screen again. 
And then let's go into it. So basically a hand trowel is a small pointed tool that's great for digging, planting, and weeding. Um, it's a versatile tool that is great for small gardens or working in tight spaces. So you will use these tools also in a big tillable uh, garden, but these are really essential for small garden, like uh, container planting and raised bed garden essentials. Um, the other thing I want to say about this is think about how many people you have working in the garden with you. Um, is it just you? Is it you and your husband, your partner? Um, is it you and your kids? How many people are generally working with you? Have most of these tools, one for each person, especially the scratcher, have multiples of that. You also want several of the hand trowel. Um, you wanna think about who's working in the garden. So definitely want to consider that when making your purchases in quantities. So a garden hoe is a tool that is used for breaking up soil, removing weeds and creating furrows for planting. It's a great tool for preparing a garden bed for planting. Um, as you can see here, um, I think she is digging up a new section. So you definitely really, really good for that. Uh, moving large portions of sod and also getting around plants. You will definitely use a hoe in your flower gardens and you will definitely use a hoe in your um tillable plot garden. Not so much in a raised bed and obviously not at all in a container gardening, um, but a hoe really is, I don't use it at all uh, because I don't have a plot garden. Everything I garden in is raised beds. So you want to take that into consideration, especially if you're a new gardener and you're contemplating what kind of gardening do I want to do? Do I want to do container gardening? Do I want to have raised beds? Do I want to have a large plot? If you're going to have a large plot, you definitely want that. And uh, this week coming up, I'm going to be going into my raised bed garden series um, or two-part series uh, for my Gardening 101. So I'm going to talk about the benefits of raised bed gardening. And there's a lot. So if you haven't made a decision yet, hang on on. Um, I believe that comes out Tuesday or Wednesday and then Thursday. So you definitely want to, to read that and to, before you make a decision. And a garden rake or a pitchfork. Uh, both tools are essential. Uh, a, this is a pitchfork my son Ryan is using to put some manure in new raised beds um, on top of the straw and then soil was going to go on top of that. Um, and so a garden rake or a a pitchfork are definitely essential tools for both a raised bed garden or a plot garden. Um, not obviously you don't need either one of those tools for container gardening. So when I talk about container gardening, I'm talking about my uh, friends listening who live in an apartment or a condo or someplace where you cannot have raised beds, but you still want to be able to grow a tomato plant or some herbs um, or a pepper plant. And believe me, you can grow so many things in containers. Don't be dismayed if you don't have a yard and you live in an apartment. As long as you have some sunshine and some space for pots and even the railing pots. I'm going to go into a lot of that this summer on how to do container gardening. So I'm going to have a whole episode on that for you guys. But a garden rake, um, similar to that, and I, sorry, I don't have a picture of it, but I'm hoping everybody knows what a rake is, uh, a metal rake, not a leaf rake. Um, and so what I use my metal rake for is when we are doing a new raised bed or I'm putting new uh, topsoil or garden soil or uh, composted manure, I use the back end of it to smooth out my soil. And it's a really great tool. You want a pitchfork for lifting uh, larger items like manure or straw. So depending on where you are, if you're in a city or on your farm, um, you're going to have different uses for those. Shears. Uh, your garden shears are really important uh, for both flower and vegetable gardening. Uh, the one uh, to the left and to the right um, are bigger. Those are going to be used more for pruning trees. So if you have fruit trees or blueberry bushes or raspberry canes, um, those are things that you're going to definitely want to have. Um, the hand shears, the ones in the middle, are really great for um, eggplant. You would be surprised. Kitchen shears, but the, the garden shears are much better. Eggplant stems are really, really thick and tough to break off. And oftentimes, if, you do, if you're trying to snap it off like you would a pepper, um, you're going to do damage to the plant stem that it was growing on, and it will break it or bend it. And then oftentimes, that will attract bad bugs. They just smell it. I don't know what it is, but they attract to, you know, an injured plant and then they can destroy the plant. So having a good pair of hand shears to cut peppers, uh, to cut 
clusters of grapes if you're growing uh, certain types of cherry tomatoes. And for definitely woody herbs like rosemary, tarragon, or some of the other uh, woody stemmed um, herbs are these, this is an essential tool. Um, if you don't have any trees that you're um, um, trimming back, or if you don't have shrubs, if you live in a condo and it's not your job to do that, then don't waste the money on these large shears. You don't need them. There's nothing in your vegetable garden that you're going to need those, but your hand shears, definitely, whether you have a container garden, whether it's a raised bed or a plot a tillable garden, definitely get yourself a couple good pair of shears. And again, quantity, how many people are going to be working in the garden? I recommend having two of these just because um, if one breaks, you know, then you got another back up pair. So I'm always about, you know, having that backup pair. I hate being out in the garden and can't find something or something breaks and I don't have another set and I have to go to the garden store and stop what I'm doing. So think about that. Think about the big picture of what you're going to be gardening, what you're going to be growing, the type of garden and those tools. So a watering source, of course, we have to water our plants, right? <clears throat> Again, excuse me, folks, I'm gonna take a little sip of my coffee. Good morning. Hello, moonshine. I love the moon. But um, there's a few things that you need to think about with a gardening source. Um, I really don't recommend the, you know, the ones that go like this, the oscillating, or I guess those are not oscillating. Um, the first one here is an oscillating one. Um, but I don't really recommend those for a garden. I just don't think, I think they're, they're for a lawn. But the first one here, right here, this oscillating one where it goes, ch -ch 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 -ch, you know, that is great. That's what I use in my raised bed garden because you can adjust it um, and it can go wider, it can go smaller, and you can really trust that your beds are all being evenly watered. So I definitely recommend one of those um, if you have a tillable or raised bed garden. Obviously you don't need that with a container garden. I do recommend having a good garden hose. Um, if you, you know, you get what you pay for, you know, you always are going to get what you pay for. And so if you have a really good hose, a, a heavy duty one, it's going to last longer, especially if you take care of it, put it away in the winter, don't let the water freeze in it. But um, I know a lot of people like those those fabric ones that are kind of scrunchies. And those are great if you have like your flowering pots around your porch or just around the porch. Those are great. I don't think those are really handy or useful for a regular garden, a raised bed garden or a tillable garden. Um, you're just not going to want to do that all the time and then so you really do want to have a good hose that can you know go out be stretched out put back um and then a hand nozzle that is essential um especially if you're container gardening because you want to be able to water the soil not necessarily plant and so having that on a shower um uh setting is what you want to be able to do or for uh hanging baskets. So there is really a lot of thought that has to go into what you're going to use for watering your plants and your gardens. And so thinking about that when you're purchasing again, what kind of garden do I have? What is really necessary? How am I going to utilize this? So you always want to think about the expense because if you're spending money on things you don't need, that means you can't buy as many plants. So we want to buy as many plants as we can. So think about what you're spending. <clears throat> And then a wheelbarrow. Um, this was an essential tool. We had several of them back on the farm uh, because we always were building new raised beds or hauling things. Um, I had a lot, of, they hauled pea stone, uh, soil, straw, manure, um, you name it. And they actually carry plants too. So it's a really good tool to have. Um, it really saves your back. Last Mother's Day, oh my gosh, we were spreading mulch in all my flower beds. My kids were over and um, I lifted the one end and twisted my back. I was down for two months. Terrible. So really think about using your tools. Gardening, unfortunately, can cause injuries. So you really want to be conscientious of what you're lifting, how you're lifting, you know, use your knees, not your all your back when you're lifting things. Have tools that make the work easier. Work smarter, not harder. Um, and that goes for gardening too. And so thinking about um, an ergonomical, this is obviously not an ergonomical uh, wheelbarrow. This is an old farm wheelbarrow, but it, it got the job done. But now I have a nice, you know, green plastic one that, you know, is more for uh, more ergonomical. So it's a, it's a great tool to have. So you definitely want to be able to have a handy dandy wheelbarrow.
So now a garden trellis, a garden trellis can be a lot of things and it depends on what you're growing. Um, obviously you can see here, we have some uh, green metal tomato cages. And if you look back into this back corner, right over here where my mouse is, I think, I hope you can see it. There's some red, very thin metal uh, wires right there. That was a red metal uh, trellis that I purchased to see how I liked uh, to grow some tomatoes on and it worked great. So I did like it. I did prefer my tomato cages for my tomatoes though. Um, and so trellises can be, like I said, in my first slide, it was a side of a crib. How creative do you want to be? Are you shabby chic? Are you going to put them, you know, cool elements in your garden? I personally love that. I actually in this garden had an old um, white painted wooden fence or a, a railing uh, from when we redid our decking. And uh, it was a great trellis for my cucumbers and it added an element into the garden. I love adding architectural pieces, um, artistic pieces. I love using old galvanized metal tubs, which I'm going to be uh, showing you guys how to make an herb garden soon in one so cute um but so your trellises you can also you know for your flower gardens you know growing up clematises um trumpet vine and any other um vining plants you want trellises uh they need to have something to grow on also grapes if you're having a grape arbor you're going to want to do some research on how to make a grape arbor and there's all different kinds of materials that you can use i personally recommend hog fencing um if you use anything else, you think about putting your hand through and grabbing the grapes. So there's so much thought that goes into every element of how you're going to garden and what is going to make it easier for you. Work smarter, not harder. So when you're planning these things out, when you're planning your garden, think about what am I growing? And like I said in my when, uh, my uh, post on ordering seeds, when you're ordering um, beans, and eggplant, I'm sorry, uh, zucchini, you don't have to get vining ones uh, because it really does add another element. Try to get an heirloom bush type. Um, so those are things that you want to take into consideration because they are an extra expense. So we're gonna talk about garden design next week. And I'm gonna help you think about those things because it's like when you're plotting out your garden, where are you going to plant your tomatoes? Okay, I, how many tomatoes do I want? How many cages do I need? I'm going to, I want to grow pole beans. Okay, so how am I going to grow them up? Um, what am I grow the, going to grow them on? Can I make a cool teepee out of wood branches, which is super awesome. I used to do that with my uh, beans on the farm. Or am I going to do bush beans? So everything has to be thought out and planned. So when you get into the garden, you are not going to be like, oh, goodness, I didn't think about that. Now I have to go up to the garden center or someplace to buy this. You want to have all the materials you need when you are ready to plant. And I'm so excited to start putting together our raised beds. One more thing I'm going to add before I wrap this up is knee pads or little footstools. I mean, you can find those little uh, like rolling benches that you can sit on. I use knee pads all the time uh, for in the garden because my gardens are generally have pea stone um, surrounding the, the beds. So not nice to kneel on. So think about a knee pad or a little uh, footstool that you can sit on, especially if you have back issues. You want to think about that. You don't have to not garden because you have some some back issue or something. You can find a way to garden safely. So what it boils down to is having the right tools for gardening success, safety, and pleasure. Having the opportunity, the appropriate gear, tools, and equipment will make gardening experience a much more enjoyable one. And if you missed episodes one through seven of my Gardening 101 series, just click the links in the description below or simply go over on over to my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com. Be sure to subscribe and don't miss a beat. And if you enjoyed this episode, please, I'm trying to grow my YouTube following here. So subscribe, smash that subscribe button, smash that uh, like button, and please share a comment with me. I love your feedback. I will always answer you. I love your tips and tricks when you share with me. And um, I always want to be able to engage with you guys. It really is important for me. 
Well, Dragonfly friends, thanks again for stopping by. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to smash that like and subscribe buttons below so you don't miss a beat. And be sure to visit me at my podcast. Um, every Wednesday, I do interviews with incredible entrepreneurs uh, in the gardening world, cooking world, um, leadership, female entrepreneurs, you name it, I talk to them about it. Uh, farmers markets, it, it's all there and it's so much fun. Um, you can just hear me and my, my colleagues or friends or fellow you know entrepreneurs chatted up about a topic or not and it might just be what you need that 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 little encouragement or that little nudge if you're thinking about starting your own business your own farm or your own flower stand or whatever it is uh, I'm I am confident you're going to be encouraged over there and be sure to visit me at my blog because I do all kinds of recipes there and I do organization series there lots of stuff that doesn't happen over here at my YouTube channel and don't forget my platforms my social media platforms I do incredible fun reels all different things on my Instagram page share all kinds of encouragements and cool stuff on my Facebook page Pinterest um, so visit me there, like me, share, share over there. And um, again, always leave me comments, feedback. I love it. And so until next time, friends, eat fresh, shop local and have a happy day. See you next time.